Hello. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Professor Pachori. Uh, 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 good morning. Good morning, everyone. And uh, morning, welcome, sir. Shenki. Yes, sir. Uh, can we start? You just on your video. Yes, sir. And uh, share, sir. Welcome slide. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. May I start, sir? Uh, yes. Okay. Please on your video. Sir, it's on. Okay. Sir, is it visible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now it's visible. And uh, but slide same. Uh, yes. Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah, please start. Okay. Thank you. Please start. Knowledge becomes power only when we put it into use. Very good morning to one and all present here. It's my privilege to introduce our today's keynote speaker, Dr. Ramvilas Pachauri, a professor, Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Indore. I welcome you, sir, for today's keynote session. I would like to first give a brief profile of Dr. Pachauri. Dr. Ramanas Pachauri received his B degree with honors in electronics and communication engineering from Rajiv Gandhi Technological University, Bhopal, MTech and PhD degrees in, in electrical engineering from IIT Kanpur. He worked as a postdoctoral fellow at Charles Deloitte Institute <coughs> University of Technology of Troyes, France during 2007-8. He presently works, he presently he has been working as a professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Indore. Currently, he is also associate, he is also associated with Center for Med, Center for Advanced Electronics at IIT Indore. He has served as a visiting professor at School of Medicine, Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences. Taylor's University, Subang Jaya, Malaysia during 2018-2019. Previously, he has worked as a visiting scholar at Intelligent Systems Research Centre, Ulster University, London Dairy, UK during December 2014. His research interests are in the areas of signal and image processing, biomedical signal processing, non-stationary signal processing, speech signal processing, brain computer interfacing, machine learning and artificial intelligence and internet of things in healthcare. He is an associate editor of electronics letters, IEEE transactions on neural systems and rehabilitation engineering, biomedical signal processing and control, and an editor in IET technical review journal. He is a senior member of IEEE and a fellow of IET and IET. He has served as a member of review boards for more than 100 scientific journals. He has also served in the scientific committees of various national and international conferences. Presently, he is serving as a general chairman of 2022 Second International Conference on Signal Image Processing and Communication, Qingdao, China. He has delivered more than 210 talks and lectures in conferences, workshops, short-term courses, and academic events organized by various institutes across the world. He has been listed in the top 10 H-Index scientists in the area of computer science and electronics by research.com website. He has been listed in the world's top 2% scientists in the study 
carried out at Stanford University, USA. He has received several awards, including Achievement Award, IICAI Conference 2011, Best Paper Award, ICHIG Conference 2012, Excellent Grade in the Review of Sponsored Project, DST 2014, Best Research Paper Awards, Triple IIG Indoor 2015 and 16, Premium Awards for Best Paper, IIG Science, Measurement and Technology Journal 2019 and 20, and IETE Professor SVC IA Memorial Award 2021. He has supervised 14 PhD, 20 MTechs, and 41 BTech students for their thesis and projects. He has 20, two, 244 publications, which include journal papers, conference papers, books, and books chapters. He has also he has also two patents, one Australian patent granted and one Indian patent filed. His publications have been cited more than 10,000 times with H-index of 53, according to Google Scholar. He has worked on various research projects with funding support from SERB, DST, DBT, CSIR, and ISMR. So on this note, I would like to welcome Dr. Pachori for the keynote address on the title, Biomedical Images Classification Based on 2D Fourier Basal Series Expansion. So please. Thank, thank you very much uh, for a nice uh, introduction. And I would like to convey my thanks to uh, conference organizers uh, for providing me this opportunity uh, to be part of this uh, reputed conference and to deliver a keynote speech in this talk, in this uh, conference. Uh, thank you very much. So let me share my slides. Sir, uh, just uh, I, I I would like to request all participants because we want to have a group photo with you. So before start of the slide, I will request all participants, please, on your camera. Yes, please. Who is taking this snap? Yes, sir, I'm taking. Yes, please. Yes, sir, then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, please, now you can start. Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, today's talk is on biomedical images classification based on two-dimensional Fourier Bessel series expansion. So actually, in this talk, we will see uh, some of the recently developed this Fourier Bessel series expansion-based methods uh, for image analysis uh, by, in our laboratory. And they are FB, FBSE, WT, FBSE based empirical web data transform, FBSE WT method, and uh, other one is FBSE, FAWT, FBSE based flexible analytic web data transform. And we will see uh, their applications uh, for two actually uh, image classification problem. Uh, one is at, 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 for, suitable for glaucoma identification uh, based on the fundus images. And second one is suitable for the identification of the different grades uh, uh, of the diabetic retinopathy and uh, uh, this uh, uh, macular edema uh, identification of different, different grades uh, uh, of the or diabetic patients. So these actually, these methods, uh, whatever you present, they, are, they have nice feature. They can be, can, uh, uh, represent the form of software and we can install them in the computer laptop mobile and uh, they can be used as a uh, like assisting uh, assisting tool uh, for the doctors for the clinicians and uh, it is actually very useful for computer related medical diagnosis so with this background let us start this talk so this is the overview of this talk first we will see introduction and after that we will see fourier bessel series expansion and uh, the mathematical uh, theory behind uh, this Fourier Bessel series expansion. Then uh, glaucoma diagnosis uh, based on the two-dimensional FPS EWT, uh, that Fourier Bessel series expansion based empirical transform will be explained. And then different grade classification of diabetic retinopathy 
and the diabetic macular edema uh, that is based on 2D FDSEWD will be presented and at the end conclusion will be uh, provided. So uh, this actually uh, before starting this uh, Fourier Bessel series expansion and its uh, uh, various applications uh, in 2D case to dimensional uh, scenario. Uh, let us briefly understand uh, what is the need of transform and what is the Fourier transform by what is the need of Fourier Bessel series expansion. So transform actually, uh, this is one of the uh, uh, important or basic requirement of signal processing. So where actually we take one signal or function in one domain and it converts into other domain. And uh, it helps us to do a lot of actually uh, useful signal analysis. Uh, we want to extract information from the signal and that is actually uh, not possible in time domain. So we, by doing this transformation, we go another domain and where we nicely extract the information. So that is actually, uh, it is very difficult to find any area of science and technology where this transform is not used. So whatever areas like electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, computer science, uh, different, different areas actually people have used transform uh, because signals are available in most of the areas. So uh, these are the some of the actually regions uh, where we prefer to use signal transforms. This transform provides certain information about the original function or the signal. So like when we have signal in time domain, uh, we don't know what are the frequency present the signal, which frequency is the major frequency, which frequency is the minor frequency of the signal. But when we uh, perform transformation, then from the frequency domain, for example, uh, we, we can understand what are the different, different components present in the signal. And that tells what is the major frequency, what is the minor frequency, what is the signal uh, frequency range, what is the noise frequency range. So a lot of information can be obtained and transform help us to solve the defensive equation. So like uh, in signal processing and uh, generally we assume that the signals they are output of the system and the system is represented with the help of this mathematical expressions uh, is one of the mathematics of differential equation. And uh, this transforms actually can help uh, the solve the differential equation. Because if you have differential equation of uh, like very simple order or less order, then um, the manually they can be solved. Uh, but when you have a high order system, a complicated system uh, from which the signals are generated, uh, then actually the differential equations are corresponding to high order and uh, this transforms help us a lot uh, to solve such kind of differential equation. And also this transform help us to provide data compression and storage may require less memory. So one of the important part in transform that is actually basis functions. So if somehow you are able to select the basis functions according to the signal that you want to analyze, uh, then the requirement will be coefficient will be less. So for example, uh, selection of the spoon depends on the type of food. And if you want to have noodles, then we use fork because your food is discontinuous, the spoon is also discontinuous. Similarly, if you are able to uh, select basis functions according to the requirement of the signal, then the requirement of coefficient will be less because your basis functions uh, will show the structural similarity uh, with the signal that you want to analyze. So this is actually uh, one of the important part of signal analysis, image analysis. And uh, here actually in this talk, we will see uh, the, the replacement of sinusoidal functions in Fourier transform with the help of Bessel functions uh, provide us a lot of actually uh, interesting features uh, in image analysis. And that we will see various applications in biomedical domain. And uh, other actually things, uh, some operations may be easier to apply in the transform domain, uh, for example, like convolution operations. So one of the actually important part of the transform uh, is that whatever uh, we actually in this world, whatever is happening, it has connection with time. And by doing this transformation, you are going in such a domain, there is no time. And that is very important. So you can do a lot of processing uh, without depending on the time. And that is actually uh, one of the important part. And the time is so powerful actually uh, quantity in this world uh, everything depends on time. If we were like uh, two persons are talking on phone, we don't know what they are talking, but we can uh, say that they are talking about time because time is linked with each and every process. And uh, this transformation helps us to uh, take in such a domain, uh, there is no time. So a lot of processing uh, we can do uh, without assuming any conditions on time. So for example, like if we want to implement convolution, then you don't need to assume in the time uh, time domain causality. You just uh, uh, go in frequency domain and find out the spectra of the system, find out the spectra of the signal, 
and multiply both of them and perform inverse Fourier transform. You can come back in the time room. So in that way, a lot of processing can be done. So due to these reasons, actually there is a lot of interest in the literature uh, to use transformations. And uh, uh, one of the important transform that was proposed by the Fourier, actually Joseph Fourier in 1807, and he was working on the actually uh, a prism, and he that he observed that prism can decompose this white light into simple colors. So like this complicated color or complicated can be represented with this in the form of simple colors. So that he got idea if this white light can be decomposed into simple components, simple colors, then why we cannot decompose this complicated signal in terms of simple signals or non-signals. So this complicated signal, real life signals, whatever we see, for example, uh, we will see uh, in this talk, fundus images, you know, speech, electrons, velogram, you see these signals are unknown signals. And if somehow you are able to represent these signals down to non-signals, then actually a lot of uh, uh, analysis can be done with the help of these characteristics of non-functions because they are generated from our side. We have represented these unknown problems in the form of non-problems. So that is also one of the actually advantage of using this uh, Fourier kind of representation. And uh, this, uh, it was actually, according to Fourier, uh, the signals can be represented as sum of sinusoidal functions. And uh, then actually this work was submitted for publication. And uh, the, the three pop uh, popular professors of that time, Langrange, Legendre, Laplace, they were appointed as a reviewer for his work. And they were very popular. Langrange was known, well known for Langrange multiplying. Like Legendre is well known for Legendre, uh, polynomials and Laplace is well known for Laplace transform. So these actually uh, persons, these uh, reviewers actually, uh, they were having some concerns with the Fourier work and some of the concerns that we will see in the coming slides and uh, they are like uh, uh, Fourier was representing uh, real life signals in terms of complex signals and uh, most of the signals are uh, periodic signals in real life and he was using periodic basis functions. And also real life signals, they don't have positive, uh, uh, don't have negative time and negative frequency. And Fourier was using such kind of representation, which has actually negative frequency and negative time. So due to these reasons, they did not recommend his work for uh, publication, but after 15 years, they actually understood the importance of the Fourier's work. And uh, then actually uh, they, uh, they have thought that this complex representation, it is a general form of the real uh, signal representation. Uh -huh. and, Based on that, actually, they then they recommended this Fourier work publication. Even uh, whatever transform today we have is all advanced transform. We always take help of the Fourier transform to understand them. So after that, up to 143 years, there was no significant work in the signal processing. And in 1965, Pulley and Tukey, uh, yes. they come up with the fast Fourier transform, FFT algorithm. And uh, here, actually, uh, nicely, uh, we can implement uh, this um, this Fourier transform in the machines with the help of computers, and uh, that actually that time people wanted to implement or we wanted to use uh, machines uh, to execute signal processing algorithms. So Fourier transform is a very simple actually uh, representation, and uh, uh, it uses sinusoidal functions as a basis functions. And we represent uh, this complicated signal in terms of simple signals, and here simple signals are sinusoidal functions. So it is uh, one kind of bridge between time domain and frequency domain. And if you want to go from time domain to frequency domain, then we can use analysis expression. And if you want to come back uh, from frequency domain to uh, time domain, then we use synthesis process. So here you can see uh, this analysis and this is synthesis process. So analysis, we are integrating in time from minus infinite to plus infinite. So there is no time in the frequency domain. Similarly, during synthesis process, we are integrating frequency from minus infinite to plus infinite. So there is no frequency in the time domain. So time domain, when you are in time domain, there is no frequency domain. And when you are in frequency domain, there is no time domain. So both are disjoint. Uh, this is the actually important uh, feature. So like a bridge, when you are in time domain side, there is no frequency domain. When you are in frequency domain side, there is no time domain. So uh, this Fourier transform is actually uh, is very important uh, transform. But uh, when we uh, we want to re apply this for real life uh, signals, then uh, it has got some limitations. So like it is uh, suitable for stationary signals, and uh, real life most of the signals are non stationary signals. And uh, when we apply this uh, this Fourier transform, requires window function in order to open the spectrum of the signal. 
otherwise it will have spectral leakages in frequency domain and this fourier transform represents uh, real life signals in terms of complex exponential functions and it requires representation of real signals in terms of positive and negative frequency and negative frequency doesn't make any sense like it doesn't have any physical interpretations and the basis functions which we use in fourier transform uh, they are periodic in nature and do not converse so real life signals are finite and uh, we want to have such basis functions they converse faster so the basis functions which we use in fourier transform they do not include modulations in the representation so uh, there is actually if you have modulations then uh, you can represent signals in compact manner in the frequency domain and the spectrum based on the fourier transform provides frequency points equal to the half of the signal length so resolution uh, is actually half as compared to the time domain so these are the some of the limitations and luckily uh, this fourier bessel series expansion is another actually a uh, type of representation signal representation which overcomes these limitations so it has got various advantages like it doesn't require use of window function uh, in order to obtain spectrum of the signal and uh, it represents real life signals in terms of real basal basis functions so we don't have uh, complex basis functions and this provides representation of real signals in terms of positive frequencies there is absence of negative frequencies and the basis functions which we use in fourier bessel series expansion Uh, they are they are aperiodic in nature and uh, they converge with time and because they they have did we will see in the coming side they decay with time so the basis functions actually include amplitude modulation in the representation so they contribute in the bandwidth representation so bandwidth uh, requirement of the bandwidth will be less when you use such kind of basis functions in the representation and the spectrum uh, based on the fbc uh, provides frequency points equal to the signal length so that is also like uh, so the resolution uh, in frequency domain that we have that is equal to the resolution in time domain so uh, when you compare with the fourier transform then it has double frequency resolution so from where this uh, fourier bessel series expansion has come so actually this bessel functions uh, are the solution of the linear second order differential equation uh, that you can see uh, this uh, second order differential equation and if you solve this then uh, you get solution y equal to a by vx plus b by vx so a, a and b they are arbitrary constants and jvx and by vx uh, they are the bessel functions of the first kind and second uh, kind of order b so these bessel functions of the first kind or this order b jvx uh, they are very actually interesting uh, functions and they follow orthogonality principle so this means uh, we can have uh, A unique representation using such kind of basis functions so this first kind of uh, order b basis functions uh, they follow orthogonality principle and this can be seen by this expression and uh, here this alpha and beta uh, these are the actually roots of uh, this bessel function jvx equals to 0 and uh, in literature uh, this zero order and uh, one order the bessel functions of this first kind of uh, of bessel functions are found very uh, used Uh, for signal representation so like uh, this is the first one zero order and second one is one order so zero order when you see it looks like damped cosine functions and the one order that looks like damped sinusoidal functions so they have been used in the literature uh, to represent the signal and in this talk all we have actually extended them uh, for two dimensional image processing and that is a uh, for fourier bessel series expansion based on this uh, zero order and one order of the first kind of bessel functions so when we use the first kind of bessel functions of order 0 and 1 so then we have uh, this fourier bessel series expansion based representation and here you can see the first two expressions they are the synthesis for zero order and one order fbs and similarly analysis expressions uh, we can have from the zero order and one order uh, in the uh, other two expressions so here j0 and j1 they represent zero and first order bessel functions and uh, this beta k and l k they are the roots of these bessel functions and uh, this actually uh, how to compute the roots of the bessel functions so the newton epson method is used to determine the roots such that j0 equals to 0 and uh, uh, we have derived this based on the taylor series approach so this uh, bessel function uh, can be written in this form with the help of taylor series expansion and uh, uh, when you solve it then this is the solution and this is iterative manner uh, it is uh, roots are computed using this uh, uh, 
uh, due to the Epsom method. So initial value of the root is uh, two, and other for other roots, uh, this uh, initial value determined using this beta k equals to k pi. So based on that, actually uh, other roots are initial values are computed, and based on the uh, new to the Epsom method, uh, they actually uh, op, they uh, determine more accurately. Uh, this is the just rough estimation. So in that way, we computed all the roots required roots for the representation. Suppose you have your signal has length of 512 samples, then you need 512 roots. So based on the length of the signal, uh, one can compute the roots in accurate manner. So this is actually uh, what we have done. Uh, we have derived the relation between order and frequency. So like order of the Fourier vessel series expansion and the frequency of the signal that we want to represent. So once there is a relation between order and frequency, which can be used uh, to actually uh, represent uh, that frequency with the help of order. So whatever this uh, Fourier Bessel series expansion, it was actually uh, in the literature, it was just, uh, there was no mathematical theory uh, to understand the relation between order and frequency and that actually that were developed. So now this uh, Bessel functions, uh, they have actually this order has connection with the frequency. So this can be used as a, as a frequency representation or as a transform based representation and where we can use like this Fourier transform frequency domain, all like whatever orders or Fourier vessel series coefficient versus order, whatever we get in the DSC based representation, uh, we can have similar kind of frequency representation uh, in better way uh, by using this Fourier vessel series expansion with the help of this. So, so order can be converted into frequency by this relation. And uh, here, beta k is the kth root and fk is the frequency in Hertz and L is the size of the window and F is the sampling rate. So in that way, we can have a spectrum. And uh, after that, actually, uh, we have actually uh, uh, applied this two dimensional uh, Fourier Bessel series expansion uh, for actually uh, this glaucoma uh, diagnosis. So in the literature, uh, there was Fourier Bessel series expansion uh, uh, based uh, this empirical wavelet transform we have proposed uh, for one dimensional signals. And we have extended it for two dimensionals. And uh, earlier, actually, the Fourier Bessel series, this empirical wavelet transform that was proposed in the literature, uh, which was based on the Fourier transform, Fourier spectrum. And we have seen this uh, Fourier Bessel series expansion based spectrum uh, has many advantages as compared to the Fourier spectrum. So we replaced this uh, uh, Fourier spectrum in the empirical wavelet transform with the help of the spectrum obtained by the FBSC, Fourier Bessel series. So, so that provided us FBSC EWT method. And in this work, we have extended this FBSC EWT method uh, for two-dimensional case and uh, with various applications. So that we call two-dimensional FBSC EWT method. So we have proposed two-dimensional FBSC EWT method for image analysis. And uh, we have also uh, compared zero order and first order two-dimensional FBSC EWT method uh, for the glaucoma diagnosis based on the fundus images. And uh, we, we have actually uh, studied this uh, two-dimensional FBS EWT method in multi-frequency scale framework also. And, uh, and then actually uh, there are in the literature when you see this machine learning methods, uh, there are conventional machine learning method where people extract various features, then they perform training and testing. And that, that we have tried using conventional machine learning with this proposed method. And we have also like deep learning kind of methods, advanced machine learning methods, uh, where uh, this uh, classifier itself, they extract the feature from the data or images. So that also deep neural network uh, that we have studied. And we have compared both of the methods with the other existing methods in the literature. So this glaucoma actually is a very uh, serious, uh, this eye disease. And uh, when you see this healthy eye, uh, there is flow of aqueous humor through the drainage canal. And uh, when the, during this, for the glaucoma case, uh, the drainage actually canal is blocked and this build up the fluid. fluid. And due to that, there is increased uh, pressure.
Hello, am I audible? Hello. Hello, Vengay, sir. Hello, hello. Vengay, sir. Am I audible? Hello. Hello. Uh, I request all the present, uh, all the audience, to uh, please wait for some time. Uh, there is some technical glitch, and uh, I think power cut issue from the presenter side. Uh, keynote speaker will join soon. I request you to please be patient. I request the audience to please be, please stay connected. Uh, power cut issue has been resolved and sir will join the session in a couple of minutes. Please stay connected.
Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. I'm sorry for this uh, actually inconvenience which is caused due to uh, this my side. So my side is some technical problems. There was power off. Yes. Should I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Are you able to see the slides? Yes, sir. Is, is, this is visible. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, sir. I request all the audience to kindly mute themselves. There are some uh, noise behind these uh, means sir, during session. So please mute yourselves and patiently listen to the session. Okay. Sir, you may carry forward. Okay. So uh, we have seen actually uh, this development of glaucoma. Uh, there is increased pressure. And that and uh, damaged blood vessels, and uh, there is actually a uh, disconnectivity, uh, uh, this optical nerve with the brain, so that uh, there is no signaling. Uh, so, actually, uh, this is assessed with the help of fundus image. And here you can see this healthy case, so this we have normal cup size, but when you go for glaucoma, this fundus image there is increased cup size, and uh, this is actually one of the features that actually doctors uh, uh, use for diagnosis purpose. There is another one that they divide this fundus image into four regions, uh, inferior, nasal, superior, and temporal. So that I actually do, and based on that, uh, they actually perform diagnosis of glaucoma using fundus images. And the first actually, the main features for detecting glaucoma is an optical cup to optical disc CDR and uh, neuroretinal rim, NRR, that we have seen, and if a person is suffering from glaucoma, uh, then the CDR increases and the NRR decreases. And CDR and NR values uh, for a healthy case, it is around 0.3 and more than 0.1. And uh, on the other hand, if the CDR values are between 0.5 and 0.7, then that is for moderate glaucoma. And it is, if it is more than 0.7, then it is severe glaucoma. So based on these actually manual parameters, manual observations, manual measurement of these parameters, doctor perform diagnosis of glaucoma. And uh, this uh, image processing, uh, analysis techniques and machine learning actually provide us a very nice uh, framework uh, where we can use uh, this automated method yeah, well, for diagnosis. Oh, so, this is a two dimensional FBAC WT method. So, first, uh, the image uh, we actually apply this FBAC row wise and yeah. then we, uh, yeah. we perform average column wise. So, that gives us average row, FB, average row FBAC spectrum. And similarly, we do, uh, we apply FBAC column wise and then we perform averaging row wise that gives us average uh, column FBAC spectrum. So once we determine FBAC uh, row spectrum and FBAC uh, column spectrum, uh, then second steps require perform boundary detection on this average row and average uh, column spectrum uh, based on the scale space approach and uh, we determine corresponding filter method. So a scale space approach uh, that is actually uh, it is one. It requires a lot of smoothing, and so we have nice uh, spectrum, and uh, then uh, you you can perform segmentation. So uh, the smooth spectrum boundaries are detected based on the maximum minima approach. So maximum between two consecutive minima. So this is one example toy image, and toy image you can see uh, this is the spectrum obtained using a BSC method, and this is the spectrum using. Uh, Fourier method. So you can see here this FBSC based spectrum is more dense and nicely you can detect uh, more boundaries and you can obtain more number of components as compared to the Fourier spectrum. So that is actually uh, once you detect these boundaries, then we use uh, empirical scaling function and wavelet functions to design the filter link and we can separate the components. So these are the actually Myers wavelet mathematical expressions for that. And this is the mathematical condition so that uh, whatever uh, boundaries you have designed, they are designed, they don't have overlapping. So this is just one some examples for order zero and order one to the FBACWT method. So RGB image uh, after resizing and the second one is green channel and third one is pre-processed image. And uh, this is uh, for zero order, it's row, row, average row spectrum and uh, average column spectrum. Similarly, uh, these last two are the average row and average column spectrum for one order FBSE uh, EWT. 
So here you can see uh, this, these are design filters uh, for average row spectrum, average column spectrum for zero order case. And this is for uh, one order case. And uh, uh, in this work, three boundaries are selected to be one. So total nine images will be four. And uh, for order zero case, uh, these are the four subbands, four subband images. And uh, this order one, uh, this bottom one shows the obtained four subband images. And then these subband images have been used to extract the features uh, for diagnosis of glaucoma. And uh, uh, then also we have used actually a scaling concept. So like the initial spectrum, we have taken full scale, half scale and quarter scale. And these are the uh, obtained spectrums uh, corresponding to full scale, half scale and quarter scale. And these are the design filter bands uh, for different, different actually uh, these scales. And uh, these are the actually uh, obtained subband images uh, for full scale. And second one is for uh, half scale and third one is for quarter scale. So different different scales we have used different different uh, the often different different subband images, and then this is the proposed method. First, so we have uh, this fundus image, then we process it. This pre-processed image, then we apply two-dimensional FBS WT method, then we extract features, and then we perform selection of the features. Then we apply classify, and this gives you automated classification between uh, glaucoma and healthy uh, these fundus images. So for this actually, uh, for this study, we have used M1, R1, R2, R3, and this TGS, Odiga, these databases, and which has a, a different number of glucoma and uh, fundus, uh, glucoma and the healthy, these fundus images. And this table also shows the total number of uh, fundus images uh, for each database. And uh, in this work, actually for this, uh, uh, because this is conventional machine learning approach, so we need to extract features also. So these features uh, here we have to extracted total 116 features, uh, which are based on the gray label co-occurrence matrix GLCM, moment invariant features and histogram based features. So this table uh, gives you the uh, mathematical expressions for the GLCM features, which we have used in this work. And then this table shows the moment invariant features and uh, histogram based features are also shown in this table and which have been used as a like set of features in our work. And uh, these features actually, this is a large number of features. So uh, for feature selection, uh, we have also applied principal component analysis method. So here you can see for order zero and order one uh, to the FBS EWT method. And uh, for like uh, first zero order case, only 13 principal components are sufficient to represent 90% cumulative variance. And similarly, order one case, uh, only nine principal components are sufficient uh, to have 90% of this uh, cumulative variance or energy of that data. So uh, in that actually, uh, in that way, uh, we can represent uh, this entire 90% of the this variance uh, with, the, with the very less number of principal components that also we tried for feature reduction technique. And uh, this is a performance measures in terms of percentage of the proposed method using support vector machine, multi-layer perceptron, LSSVM, and random forest classifiers. And for this R1, R2, R12 databases using SVM classifiers uh, with various two-fold, four-fold, six-fold, eight-fold, ten-fold cross validations. And these are the performance measures, accuracy, sensory specific. And uh, you can see the values. And uh, uh, this is for uh, multi-layer perceptron classifier. These are the obtained performance measures for different, different uh, cost validation methods that also can be seen in this table. And uh, this table shows the performance measures obtained using least dispatch support vector machine classifiers for various databases, R1, R2, R1, two database. And uh, then random forest classified. And you can see the different database, R1, R2, R1, two performance measures and uh, uh, different, different uh, cost validation methods. So uh, based on this study, the best classifier out of all the classifiers uh, found out the random forest. Uh, which is followed by SBM, MLP, and LSS. Uh, so the average performance measures corresponding to this R1, R2, 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 R2 databases. And the first upper one shows the, uh, this actually accuracy, sensitivity, specificity uh, for the order zero. And second one is for order one uh, to the FBS EWT method. And uh, uh, upper one for two, zero order and uh, bottom one for uh, order one to the FBS EWT method. And uh, for support vector SBM, MLP, LSSM, RNM, forest classifiers, 
we see we can see the perform major psychosis sensory species so bhattacharya space algorithm entropy and the receiver operating characteristics and the toxin tests are used for the feature detection and uh, this actually figure shows the error bar plots of the average the light from the sun research are going to databases uh, using various feature ranking method and uh, upper one is for zero order and the uh, bottom one is for uh, order one to the basic arithmetic method based on the various feature ranking methods and this uh, figure shows the accuracy plot for various feature ranking methods uh, for database r1 to r2 and r12 and uh, then proposed method two actually is based on the deep learning method so like you have fundus image then you apply 2d abc lambda method then you have four subband images and then residual network applied to these four subband images individually and then we have ensemble and the softmax like that layer which will automatically classify this uh, ld and blue comma fundus images and uh, this is that this table shows the performance in terms of percentage of qd abc method for full half and quarter frequency scales uh, for the proposed method actually uh, one and uh, for the rim one r1 r2 r3 the best gs or the all databases and uh, and then for proposed methodology two that is based on deep neural network and this shows the performance measure of order 0 and order 1 qd abc method and for full scale and half scale and quarter scale and then actually then we have compared our method with the other existing methods in the literature so the proposed method one has provided a uh, better performance with other existing methods in the literature similarly a uh, proposed method two also is compared with the method which have used deep neural uh, network kind of actually architecture for machine learning and here also we get better results and uh, then we have actually uh, 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 we have computed the computational time for the different different steps of this proposed approach and uh, we have seen in it is it takes in terms of seconds only so this proposed method actually is highly suitable for real time implementation of glaucoma diagnosis and uh, by using abc instead of fourier transform we can get better boundaries uh, with segmentation and the proposed method one best results are obtained using order one to the abc reduce method with the frequency and rf classifier and the proposed method two order one to the abc wd method sub images at full frequency scale with fusion ensemble model has provided better results <coughs> and results and com computers time for both methodology uh, so that methods can be implemented in real time manner so practically they can be implemented for real time diagnosis after that actually the different gate classification of diabetic retinopathy and diabetic macular edema uh, has been performed using two dimensional abc wd Uh, FBSC FWT method. So this flexible analytic wavelet transform recently that is actually proposed in the literature, uh, where it is based on the Fourier spectrum, and uh, we have actually extended this uh, uh, flexible analytic wavelet transform, which is a more general form of the tunable Q wavelet transform TQWT, where you have flexibility in controlling Q, uh, controlling the redundancy or number of uh, this dilation factors. so this is fwd is general form of the tqwd tunable qwd wavelet transform and uh, this fwd uh, it was actually implemented based on the fourier plan and we have implemented it based on the fourier bessel series expansion so we have introduced order 0 and order 1 to the fbsc flexible analytic wavelet transform for image decomposition and <coughs> we have also proposed selection of best quality factor redundancy and dilation factor for the application of diagnosis of different grades of diabetic retinopathy and uh, diabetic uh, macular edema and uh, local binary pattern and rotation invariant features uh, they are investigated for different scales of 2d abc wt fwt and uh, study has been performed to find out the best grouping operation of the subband images and uh, diabetic actually is a, uh, is the root cause of this uh, uh, diabetic retinopathy and diabetic macular edema and uh, that is actually complications and uh, this uh, dme uh, actually this is the advance from diabetic diabetic retinopathy and and uh, dr actually is developed when the blood vessels get damaged due to high blood uh, sugar le levels and uh, this actually uh, this dr grades are characterized based on the volume of fluids uh, which is link uh, leakage with the damage of the blood vessels and grade of dme is also based on the distance between the heart uh, It suggests an macula. 
so that you can see uh, in this funders images and the different different regions. So uh, this is a very serious disease, and for this uh, uh, identification of the different different grades of uh, the DR and the DME, uh, we have used these three databases: IDRID database, uh, Macedo database, and APTOS 90 database. And uh, uh, this uh, this has actually fundus images of the different different grades, and uh, this is the number of counts also can be seen in this table. And uh, then this is the proposed approach uh, for uh, this automated identification of the grade of DR and grade of DME. So we have fundus image, then we apply pre-processing, then uh, we can use order zero and order one. So we have compared both FBSEWT method, then number of label selection, and then subband grouping. And then we have extract we need to extract features uh, which are based on the this local binary pattern and variance, and uh, then we perform feature reduction using PCA method. Uh, then uh, that will actually give you the, the apply the machine learning methods, which will automatically identify different band gates of DR and gates of DME. So these are the mathematical expression for two dimension FBSE uh, of the image of the size m cos n. And we can see this is the first one is synthesis equation, and second one is analysis. So when you put, uh, like uh, for example, uh, if you want to have a zero order, then put a equals to zero, and if you want to have one order, then put a equals to one. So in that way, you can have this uh, analysis and synthesis expressions for two dimensional FBSE uh, method uh, by putting this different different a's zero and one. So this actually, uh, this flexible analytic wavelet transform, that is actually, uh, it requires use of positive frequency, negative frequency, because it use analytic pairs, silver transform. So what actually we have done, we have suggested use of FBSE spectrum. So there is no negative frequency component. So you can implement this uh, flexible analytic wavelet transform in, in simple manner, in, in, in efficient manner. So because if FBSE provides only positive frequency range, so this is the filter bank of every WT. So we have actually uh, this low pass and uh, this uh, was the conventional FAWT based on the four years. So you, here you can see you have negative frequencies also. And uh, this right hand side, uh, that is the FAWT uh, that is proposed using FBSE method, Fourier vessel series expansion, where there is the absence of the negative frequency component. So nicely you can implement uh, this FAWT with the help of only positive frequency range, which is available in FBSE. Uh, FBSE. So that actually we extended for uh, two dimensional case. So here you can see, uh, this is a analysis synthesis filter banks uh, for two dimensional FBSE FBD method. And this is its uh, simplified version. So based on that easy implementation, you can implement it easy and biomedical image classification. It is uh, uh, nice to have actually fast implementation. So this is actually general implementation that is based on the uh, conventional method. And this is uh, proposed by us based on the FBSE. And uh, this is that already uh, designed parameters uh, in the base paper that we have used uh, the same constraints. <coughs> and number of labels are selected based on the this Fourier vessel series expansion based decomposition. So if uh, energy of the approximate part uh, and uh, this ratio to this energy of the original signal is coming out less than 0.05, then we stop the decomposition. So on that basis, number of uh, labels are de decided. And uh, then the subband grouping, uh, actually there are three methods uh, available in the literature. We have also uh, done the same way. And the 10 channel, seven channel and four channel for the three level of decomposition. And here 10 channel, all subbands are considered. Seven channel, only diagonal subbands are neglected and uh, four channel diagonal subbands are neglected and anti diagonal components are added. So in that way, uh, we have selected the different, different groups. Uh, actually, already in the literature, they have shown that like, they uh, are sensitive for the class. They have very good, significant information. So similar way, we have actually applied this concept for FBSE based FAWT method. So these are the mathematical expression for local binary pattern and various features which we have used. And uh, <coughs> then, uh, this we have uh, applied KNN and support vector machine random forest classifier uh, for classification purpose and perform measures. Uh, average accuracy is used with the sensitivity uh, plus specific the average of that. So that is uh, for all different different grades. We have determined sensitivity specificity 
and based on the average, we will define the average accuracy. And uh, joint accuracy, uh, it is one when prediction and ground truth level matches for both D, DR and DME. Otherwise, it is zero. So these are now we will see some results. So this table shows the selected level of decompositions, number of reduced features based on the PCA uh, for each quality factor. And uh, then uh, here perform measure of the different values of quality factor and the dilation factor and the redundancy can be seen here. <coughs> and uh, for different different uh, like classifiers, SVM, RF, and BN, these quality factors have been studied. And we have obtained this classification performance. And for DR and DM, we have this classification accuracy. And similarly for dilation factor also and redundancy also. So based on that, uh, based on this study, best results are obtained for quality factor equals three and uh, dilation factor equal to 0.5 redundancy equals to one. And these are the filter at row and column filter bench design uh, for this corresponding selected, uh, this quality factor QF equal to three, DF equal to 0.5 redundancy equals to one. And uh, this uh, table shows the performance measures for channel 10, channel 7, and channel 4 subband grouping methods. And for DR and DME, uh, these are the obtained classification accuracies with the various classifiers. And uh, from this table, it is clear that seven channel subband grouping has shown best result. <coughs> and these are the actually uh, signal decomposition subband images obtained uh, using this uh, FBSA, FAWT based method. So for R channel, G channel, B channel, and RGB, this like we have subband uh, seven subbands so seven each case you can have seven uh, subbands and then uh, we have compared this actually uh, method with the other kind of actually signal decomposition approaches so like uh, dwt wavelet packet decomposition dual tree conduced wavelet transform various actually uh, similar kind of approaches curve laid control laid and then actually uh, then we have compared uh, they are actually uh, computational time also. And uh, we have seen that the proposed method is uh, highly efficient in terms of uh, computational uh, time. And it also provides uh, uh, good accuracy and uh, good uh, classification accuracy. And then we have actually uh, compared this PCA, uh, LDA, uh, this uh, without CHE, uh, no contrast limited and rate visualization. And this obtained average accuracy. And then this proposed method has been compared with other existing methods which have been studied on the same databases, these three databases. And then uh, you can see uh, this uh, the proposed method has provided better performance than the uh, other existing methods. So which we have actually, uh, this APTOS, the proposed method in the ID, RID is compared with the reference five and Macedor, this is compared with the different methods. And uh, so this is the summary uh, for L equal to three, uh, quality factor equal to three, uh, direction factor equal to 0.5 redundancy equal to the or 2D FBSWT method uh, provide the best results. <coughs> and several channel subband grouping method with random forest classifier provide the best performance. And in future study, the proposed method can be studied for the diagnosis of multi-class disease using biomedical images. And this is the conclusion of this entire talk. Uh, proposed FBSE EWT and FBSE FWT methods are able to decompose images into meaningful subband images. And the proposed framework have provided good detection performance for glaucoma and the different rates of uh, diabetic retinopathy and diabetic uh, uh, macular edema. And the proposed framework is very useful for assisting doctors in their decision making. And the computers, the smartphones with the proposed framework can be used for the diagnosis of glaucoma. Uh, DR and DME rural areas where we have shortage of doctors. And uh, if you install these algorithms in the form of software in the smartphones, then the smartphone will become really smart. And uh, it can detect uh, this glaucoma, these diseases, uh, diabetic retinopathy and diabetic uh, macular edema uh, in the initial stage. And so timely treatment can be carried out. Uh, so this, uh, thank you very much. Any questions, please? Audience are open for questions. <coughs> if 
any query please ask sir hello uh, good morning sir yeah good morning sir i am dr yogesh uh, i am uh, uh, an md from aims raipur sir and uh, it was really a pleasure to listen to your talk sir uh, sir uh, as i understand probably the fourier's algorithms are the uh, method which helps us in uh, giving the real time uh, saturation and heart rate readings when we are using pulse oximeter is that right sir yeah uh, when we are using pulse oximeter the real time data... please yes sir sir am i audible sir yes yes please uh, sir uh, as i understand i mean during uh, our academic years we had uh, studied that the pulse oximeter which is giving us the real time data for the heart rate and uh, saturation of the hemoglobin or spo2 uh, that is based on this fourier uh, uh, series expansion and uh, uh, i'm sorry sir i am not much comfortable with the uh, mathematical uh, terms but uh, is is that right sir i mean yeah. uh, this so, actually uh, yeah. yes sir uh, the point is uh, like uh, you had elaborated in uh, the talk that uh, using this uh, two dimensional image acquisition and analysis method uh, you could give us the sub classification of diseases also because uh, as you had uh, told uh, uh, very rightly that diseases are not like uh, black or white or it's not always about whether the uh, body tissue feature is a normal or an abnormal one there could be intermediate grades also right yeah. as like there it could be normal then it could be borderline abnormal then yeah. could be moderately abnormal and frankly or grossly distorted or abnormal so sir uh, can this method be applied in other uh, scenarios also like sir we have cases of chronic kidney diseases where uh, the staging is like uh, just uh, the gfr has dropped down just 20% from the normal adult male value and then it has gradually been going down and down and finally it has progressed down to esrd or end stage renal disease where the transplant remains the only option or the other option is like uh, dialysis three or four times a week different different types so sir can we have some help in this area also like yeah. uh, uh, yeah. using uh, your yeah okay. actually uh, this is one of the important part of this uh, image analysis is uh, we can come up with uh, such features uh, which are actually uh, which can be correlated with the disease level so okay, like so that can be used as a diagnostic feature. So okay. this analysis uh, plays important role to understand the features uh, which are actually directly associated with the disease level. And right, sir. based right. on that, then actually we should use this uh, machine learning based classifiers. So what actually in literature, uh, people are just classifying the normal and abnormal classes without understanding need of analysis. Image okay. analysis is very important part and interpretation is also important part that is actually done by the doctor. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yes, this sir. is actually analysis part is important in order to find out the diagnostic features and uh, different different rates of the actually disease, different level of the disease can be associated with the uh, different different level of the features or different values. Yes, sir. Of absolutely. And then actually that can be used for the interpreted interpretation by the doctors. And uh, that also can be used as a, as a like, set of features for the classification purpose. Thank you very much, sir. So Thank it you. It can sir. be studied for other cases also, like uh, uh, breast cancer uh, based yes, on sir. the mammogram images we do, then the various yes, stages sir. can be classified. Various yes, stages can be associated with the uh, different, different range of features. Right. Yes, sir. Absolutely. That's what you are doing with the bi rates, no? breast imaging and reporting yeah, uh, right. system. Okay. And this, the MRI images, even this uh, COVID nineteen CT images, different different gates of the like, yes, COVID. sir. Yes. The best part about uh, this was uh, the uh, last line where you have uh, seen uh, that this could be applied in the peripheral and rural setting also, where we have a lot of undetected cases who are having the ophthalmic morbidity. Like if they get a help in time using uh, this technology, then probably we can actually save a lot of vision isn't it sir yeah. i mean yeah. sincere this thanks to you sir yeah this actually glaucoma after 40 years actually is, uh, people are prone to have glaucoma this disease absolutely and, sir. Uh, absolutely uh, sometimes this uh, uh, macular edema actually there is no sign diabetic diabetic patients 
library yes, ethnography sir. and it takes two three years to understand and if every time there is scanning based on the fundus like these days this fundus yes, images sir. can be captured by smartphones yes and sir okay that is uh, okay. that quickly it will tell you what is the level of this diabetic uh, ethnography based on such algorithms thank you very much thank you hello thank you sir hello yes hello yes sir can i uh, take one session please yes please uh sir very good morning good morning sir actually i am a research scholar and i am working on sir image watermarking sir so sir in that uh, i am doing some uh, binary classification hello yes yes please sir in that uh, i have applied sir some statistical feature of image so can we apply sir glsm feature also uh, uh, with that the which features GLCM features, sir, as you told, and some other feature. I have applied yeah, statistical feature. Apply. Uh, when you go to restaurant, yes, sir. So there are many spoons. Okay, sir. So how do you select uh, spoons, sir? Actually, <coughs> I have applied some statistical features, sir, basically like so kurtosis, spoon. So like suppose when we go to restaurant, suppose we want to have noodles, yes. then we use fork. There is a different okay. kind of spoon. and if you want to have fruit salad then you use different different kind of spoon yes, so similarly the selection of the features depends on the type of actually uh, the data that you want to analyze okay. so that you have, you have to understand uh, for example uh, like epilepsy and if you yes. want to extract features for epilepsy eeg signal then yes. doctors what they do they see the spikes present in the eeg signal and large amplitude of the signal so yes. the whatever now features you want to extract they should be they should inherently they should cover such kind of actually features so many okay. people like spike in frequency domain it is wide so many people yes. see the frequency domain and bandwidth in the frequency domain as a feature many people see the energy of the signal because this amplitude is large for seizures so energy will be high so okay. some actually before start selecting features uh, you should try to understand uh, what is actually uh, what what is the inherent uh, feature and what actually uh, doctors uh, uh, do for that and then you try to translate that actually concept in engineering direction okay sir thank you so much sir one sir thank you sir anyone else in the audience okay uh, sir i think uh, qa session is over now so with uh, due permission sir um, may we conclude the session today yes please thank you very much i am sorry for this inconvenience caused not and not at all sir not a problem it's a uh, virtual session virtual session and uh, everyone is uh, well known of these all things it this could happen with anyone sir okay in order uh, to have i thought without any actually problem free this present is i came to my office from <laughs> no sir. okay okay uh, so uh, i uh, heartfully thank sir thank you sir for this wonderful and informative session i hope this session will help audience of the field to carry forward their research in a better way and uh, thank you once again sir for this wonderful session for your presence and everything sir thank you so much thank you very thank much you, sir thank you okay. thank you sir for thank you for this session thank you for providing very good value thank you sir thank you thank you thank you Okay thank you sir thank you thank you everyone thank you thank you sir